everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com. Welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook for tomorrow's trading. Tomorrow being the 26th of the month, uh, that would be 126 of 18. Fairly interesting day today, starting to see some of that exhaustion on the highs take place. But before we jump on in, as always, make sure to swing on over to SlingshotFutures.com, scroll down and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. From there, you'll be able to register for our email newsletter list, so you'll be notified every time one of these videos comes out. And along with that, in the newsletter itself, we talk about a bunch of different trading opportunities from stocks, crypto. If it's moving and looks interesting, it's going to show up in the newsletter, and that's something that we don't have time to cover in the video. So make sure that you don't miss any of that by signing up. Along with that, the Live Trade Room subscription and trial info, this button here allows you to sign up for a free three-day trial in the Live Trade Room so you can hang out with us for a couple days in the room and see what we're all about. Get your feet a little bit wet and see how we approach every day of trading. Now, jumping on in, we're dealing with a an exhaustive type of climax on the euro especially more than the other markets the euro seems to be a little bit overdone a lot of the markets and actually all of them if we look at them really quick all of the markets are looking for a return to the mean that means that we've broken out aggressively above the highs we need a return to the market uh, kind of average it needs to kind of balance itself out notice every time we've broken above these previous swing highs for continuation it's never been able to come all the way back the same thing here we have an aggressive breakout they haven't been able to come back yet and every time before that it's been able to right it breaks out aggressively pulls back finds good continuation and breaks out and it sort of just slammed the gas pedal and that is unsustainable type of movement that is not a healthy trend a healthy trend tends to return back to those means before continuing back up in this case the euro is a little bit exhausted we've had a big leg up a pullback a big leg up, a shallower pullback, and a big leg up, and now we're starting to see the pullback gain a little bit of ground, but we still have yet to return to that area of interest. So really what I'm looking for is the market to want to overcorrect a little bit. It's gone bonkers to the upside, and we could even kind of use a little bit of uh, kind of back-end math, if you will, and add these two zones together. We can say, okay, well, it it punched higher about that leaving that amount of distance open without filling that area and if we can combine that up to here we can also say well that's a little bit more than what they did back here so we're looking for an overcorrection of about this distance that gives us a couple different options first of all an overcorrection of this area measuring off the highs with an overcorrection down would put a level of support at 2300 but that said we still have this open right so we still need to keep that in mind where they might end up going down and breaking out a trap low below that swing low to retest back down to this area so not only could we potentially have an overcorrection down here but if we take that exact same box we might have an overcorrection through the next level as well and that gives a major level of support floating down at around 20,725. so we have two overcorrective areas that i'm looking for on a test and in the long run i would much rather see this down here so we can maintain our healthy trend and then from there we may be able to get that bounce back to the upside now the game plan going into tonight evening and afternoon session uh and then you know going into tomorrow the anticipation is that this pullback is going to likely continue we have a very aggressive slap to the downside the buyers tried breaking out above the highs and they have failed one notable area that i am definitely going to keeping be keeping my eyes on is this previous swing high before the breakout move right the markets love to come back and retest those types of areas on breakouts so i would be looking for potential selling opportunity which sounds strange because this is a very strong bull rally up but if we can get a candle that comes up test that area and look something like this where it fails to continue out through the top of that that is a potential selling opportunity to drive the market even further down to reclaim some of these areas of interest once again back at 23 24 thousands so that's kind of the game plan going into tonight's session. I'm looking for this to continue back down, not necessarily after this big bear bar, because not a lot of the sellers are going to want to sell here, hoping that it goes further. A lot of the move is already done. So what I'm more anticipating is a quick snap back up to around 25,000 for a bounce off of there to get the continuation down into tomorrow's session uh, off of that. So 25,000 is kind of the key area of interest that I am looking for uh, for the overnight session play and looking to see if we can get that bounce down. 
Over on gold, we have another market that is looking to return to the average area. Now, this one, not as extreme, uh, at least up here. Starting from here going forward, it's not so bad, right? We have the previous swing. They came back to that one. Nice, healthy trend. We have the same, the same thing. Previous swing, looking for a return to the mean before a continuation bounce to the upside. But the one thing that does stand out is the potential of a three push wedge high. We have a first push high, a secondary push high, and now a third. And the third looks a little bit more aggressive than the rest signaling once again potential exhaustion so although i am looking for the market to come back down to 45.1 that might not be where they end up finding final support. We could probably chop around this area for a little while tonight in the overnight, but I'm looking for this to potentially continue a little further down. And that leaves us with a couple other things that we could be looking for. A nice deep 78.6% correction would be the next one up. Uh, now, the 78.6% correction would be right there at 1333.2. And you'll notice what that lines up with and why it's a level of interest is because that lines up almost perfectly with where this big launch to the upside started and I'm looking for that 78.6% not only as a fib level but as the buyers defending their original entry point before that monstrous rally to the upside so again I'm looking for two different areas assuming that in the overnight session we're going to continue this bearish momentum I'm looking for support at 45.1 and then 33.2 both of which I'm looking for some bouncing and even better would be a trap below these lows at 24.5 and then on crude oil, once again, another market that's looking to return back to its average sort of mean, if you will. Uh, we do still have this wide open gap down here that they haven't yet to come back and physically test. And now well, that may end up haunting us in the near future in the next couple months. Uh, but for right now, that doesn't have a huge impact uh, in, you know, being a little bit nervous. Uh, but that does leave a pullback zone at around 59.07 if they want to dip really far back. We've left a bunch of these behind on crude oil, right? They left one back here. We left another one, well, arguably back here. Uh, we've now formed another one right here. All of these are potential areas of interest. And the problem when you have so many levels of interest on the way up when they're breaking out aggressively, well, which one do you want to follow, right? Which one lines up the best? That's usually where we start using a combination of technical analysis saying, okay, well, uh, you know, this one, you know, maybe it bounces here, maybe it bounces there, maybe it comes all the way back here. Which one do I want? Well, that's where we start, again, stacking up different levels of interest. And if we look at the overall bullish trend to the upside, we can find a bull channel. And this is where we start looking to combine things. So if they take a little while longer, probably not going to happen. It would need to take about 12 to 16 more hours. Uh, you have a combination point. So that one, not that great of an area. Okay, well, we'll go to the next one then. We'll get rid of that, see if we can line up any fibs with some of these areas. If we measure to the upside, this does look pretty solid for a 50%. Let's add that 50% level on there. And we can see that 50% lines up almost perfectly inside of there, right along with the moving average kind of coming into combination there as well. So obviously 64.91 is going to be an area of interest. Some of these other swings, eh, there's not a whole lot that we can do with it. You know, given that this was such an aggressive rally to the upside, I would almost rather just draw from the overall low before that breakout to the new high breakout that is formed from there. And then we can start kind of narrowing in some of these levels. The 50% it doesn't really line up very well with anything. There is a swing low at 74, but that's nearly, you know, 50 cents off from the previous. So not that good of a zone. Let's try the 61.8. Does the 61.8 line up with anything? No, not really there either. The 78.6 doesn't really line up with anything else there. It's kind of the same problem. Now, if we look at price, this is definitely not the low before the rally. We could also say, hey, maybe this low down here. Does this line up with anything? Well, now... You can see right off the bat, guess what? 50% lines up at 60.75, 60.74 is the level. One penny difference on that major level at 74. Okay, so we have a little bit of an area of interest at 74 to 75 as well. And if we add the 61.8 on here, once again, we can see that that does start to line up a little bit closer. It's still about 30 cents off, but it's starting to line up a little bit closer to that 59.07. Now we have some levels to work with. It does mean that the swing high at 58, I really don't care about. The big ones are going to be 74 and 07 with the FIB levels lining up along with it. And depending on where we are at that point in time, we might also have the, the moving averages aiding as support or resistance as well. But one way or another, the next area of interest is going to be 64.91 on that previous test, all the way down to 76, kind of that 20 tick band of support looking for a sub bounce. 
Now, because we do already have, uh, you know, two points on this high, it is definitely feasible to see another attempt. But one thing that we always want to keep an eye on when the market is looking a little bit exhausted is not necessarily the highs, but the high closes, right? The high closes are important because that's where the buyers likely bought in. When you have a strong bull bar, they don't necessarily want to wait for that candle to break through the highs. They're just going to buy at the market and that ends up being the close of the candle. So the high point on crude oil, looking across the top there at around 6620s to 6630s, is going to be an area of interest as well. Either way, looking for a support bounce between 91 to 76 tonight for a potential rally going into tomorrow's price action. And then over on the S&P, we have a relatively sturdy range forming up on the top here. They have yet to really get back up to the highs. They tried. They definitely made an attempt at it, but we have a lower high. And now we're forming somewhat of a kind of a, an oddball megaphone-ish kind of flag-ish kind of pennant. Uh, talk about a, a strange combination of indications here. But uh, really what I'm looking for is for the market to want to dip back down to some previous structure. We have a strong breakout here. We can mark up another one there. We can mark up another one here. The, the index markets have been on an absolute tear but for the most part i want to see them dip back down to between 2815 and 2809 half that's going to be the big area of interest and 2809 half lines up with that previous big strong push to the upside where the buyers might want to start defending off of those lows now i'm not looking for a huge bounce but i am looking for at least a return back to the average point of this range that's forming now if we can get a bounce off of 15 to nine and a half all the way back up to 40 75 or so it's a pretty big bounce in terms of the S&P. It might take a couple days to finish, but that's really what I'm looking for right now. At this point in time, we're in a range. I'm not really anticipating the market wanting to do anything other than range, but if we can get a dip underneath, definitely looking for some buying underneath the range to buy some better prices for a pop back up. So that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email, jbrink at slingshotfutures.com. Like we always say, it's going to make a plan, trade that plan, follow those rules, maybe A-OK. -okay. Until the next time, we'll see you all then.